What's up everybody, I'm Josh Hancock. As you've seen in that previous footage, my deadlift form used to be absolutely terrible. One thing that helped me was actually switching from conventional to sumo, that's me specifically. This video is gonna be completely on the sumo deadlift and some common mistakes, some things to avoid and how I personally like to set up my own sumo deadlift. My current lifts in the IPF, my best lifts are 573 squat, uh, 396 bench press and a 600 pound deadlift all at a body weight of 163 or the 74 kilo division. The very first thing that I find if someone's not actually used to pulling sumo yet they, they might have done conventional for a few years uh, they actually don't have the mobility uh, that is required for the sumo so it, it, it takes a lot of uh, external rotation mobility in the hips specifically so people tend to have an actually a pretty narrow stance when they start off because they're so used to deadlifting conventional that when they come to sumo they find that they can't go out much wider than this position or else it actually starts aggravating their hips too much and this is actually something that was really really um, painful when I started to switch to sumo myself. The problem is if you're deadlifting really narrow like this is that you're not in a good position your hips will actually raise up before the bar will actually leave the floor which is not something you want. It causes you to actually make it easier off the floor, but really, really hard and awkward to lock out. Whereas you'll see people who are doing the sumo form correctly, it's actually, it takes a, a lot of patience off the floor, and then it tends to be super easy at the lockout. So for me, my stance would be pretty much right here. This is how I would set up. You don't want to be too wide either. So we just spoke about how the sumo is a bit too narrow uh, uh, and some of the problems that occur when you have a narrow stance. If your stance is too wide, then you can actually, you're starting at a position that if you, it's gonna make it even harder off the floor, first of all, and then a lot of people tend to lose their balance at the top, so when they get to the top, they, they fall backwards. I've seen that happen many times in a competition before. So I try and stand somewhere kind of in the middle. Not too wide, not too uh, narrow, just right. A, a lot of the times people are wondering about uh, hip position. Where should your hips be? So if you're actually starting with a, uh, relating back to a stance that's too wide, uh, then sometimes you're, you'll see people, their hips are too low when they start. And when they start pulling, your hips will shoot up to get in that position before the bar can actually leave the ground. One thing you gotta do when everyone's different is that you have to find out a stance that'll work for you. So for me, for example, I'm five foot nine, uh, so my leverages are gonna be much different than a lot of people who are viewing this video. So you have to almost play around with it and try and uh, get a stance that works for you specifically. But I like to set my hips into a position where that as soon as I grab and I pull myself down, the bar is either gonna not come off the floor and I'm gonna miss the lift because they're staying there, or if it cracks the floor at all, I'm coming up and I'll get the lift. And uh, in terms of hand positioning, I try and teach uh, people who I coach and myself that you pretty much want to come down shoulder width, so straight down with your arms. So for me, I have really long arms, and this is pretty much where I would grab the bar. One thing that I do when I set up, I don't actually set up and then start from here, because then I find that I don't have the momentum that I want. I'm almost losing too much energy if I'm down there and, and holding the position and, and everything like that. At the end of the day, you have to find what works for you. But for me, I like to set up, grab the bar, pull myself up, so you can actually come to the side. You'll see how my back is very rounded at the moment. But then when I pull myself in position, it's in, a, it's in a pretty good spot, so it's in a neutral spot so that I can come off the floor and you're lifting uh, efficiently but also uh, safely as well. One thing that I used to do um, was when I started sumo as well, I used to pull up and then really hyperextend my back. So you can actually really avoid this in the sumo, uh, you know, protecting your lower back and not herniating any discs or anything like that. You can actually pull the bar up and as soon as you lock your legs, all you have to do is just pull your shoulders back like this 
and the lift's done. So you don't need to exaggerate it totally. That's uh, another common mistake I see in a lot of athletes. Another key thing is that I think people see the sumo as they're trying to treat it as one movement. So they're trying to think of just pulling the bar up. And when that happens, it kind of gets into this really awkward position where they're trying to pull the bar up and they're trying to lock out at the same time. And you might see beginners get stuck about right here. One thing I like to teach is to think of the sumo as a two-part movement. You're trying to lock your legs and then pull back your shoulder blades to complete the lift. So instead of one motion, legs, done. It's that simple. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and also found it informative. You can find me on my social media platforms, Instagram at Josh Hancock, Snapchat at Josh Hand Squat. And if you like the video, like the damn video and Peace.